Good morning and welcome to our online service here at St. Anne's. It's good to join with you through the internet today and to come under God's word and to bring our praise and worship to him. We're going to start our uh, service by a wonderful old hymn, You Servants of God, Your Master Proclaim. Our Bible reading today is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to stumble are bound to come, but woe to anyone through whom they come. It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied round their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So watch yourself. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even... If they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant ploughing or looking after sheep. Will he come to the servant when he comes in from the field? Come along now and sit down to eat. Won't you rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee, and he was going into a village. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, saw when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one ex returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. 
your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me say, say a prayer as we think about this passage. Lord, we, your humble servants, seek to do your will in our lives. Help us to be those who live in the knowledge of the resurrection in our own lives. Help us to put to death the old way and live and order our lives in line with your ways. And as we come to your word today, speak into our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jim Evans uh, recently sent me this picture. It'll come up on the screen. Um, it tickled me. An air and space museum. Because all that was in there was air and space, wasn't it? It was a different way of looking at uh, a phrase and a different way of looking at a building as well. Just by that simple statement, everything changed, didn't it? I know the eggs are all gone and the little chicks are not so little anymore. But the effect of Easter continues day by day. So many times in the New Testament, the writers call us to live in the light of the resurrection. That is the fact that changes things. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed us, for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We rejoice in the resurrection. We live in sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all and lives, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. The resurrection makes us alive, so we put to death sin. In the light of the resurrection, we see many things differently. We're not slaves to sin anymore. We are those who are confident of our own resurrection. So live a different life. Today as we continue through Luke's Gospel, Jesus gives us some ways of living for him. Sometimes a tough read too. But we are not alone and we have God's presence with us, his Holy Spirit. So very briefly, five things to think about. Firstly, don't trip others up. Don't trip others up. We all know that life is tough. Jesus says that, doesn't he? It's a part of being human. And Jesus reflects on that and says, uh, you know, if we bring tough times to others, though, be wary. It'd be better if a, a millstone was thrown round your neck and thrown into the sea, an image of destruction and judgment. And the way Jesus describes the people being brought down, these little ones, he calls them, doesn't he? he implies a degree of care from God, maybe something about innocence within them, maybe children. Maybe those who see the world in an uncomplicated and simple ways. Maybe those who are trusting and to a degree innocent. The word is, world is a tough place and folk learn, uh, folk do learn through the lessons of life, don't they? Also, there are many who have seen the darker side of life and have to live with what they've seen or what they've done. But Jesus is saying, be a part of the solution, not the problem. In fact, there is judgment coming if you're a part of the problem. Also, when you see people doing these things, don't sit back, but do something about it. So m many little ones have been hurt over the years by people not doing anything. Secondly, do accept criticism, but also forgive. As a society, we watch ourselves physically more and more than we ever used to. And I think it comes from mobile phones, don't they? Many use it as a little mirror to make sure their hair's in place and any blemishes taken care of. As you can see, I must do it all the time. Not. Um, but Jesus says, watch yourself. Not on a mobile phone or a mirror or whatever, but in our words and actions. We have a responsibility for ourselves. This is how... But it doesn't just stop there. Because it's about community as well and he speaks about that. Whether it's wrong, it's confessed and forgiven and restoration happens. That's one of the marvellous things about the Christian faith. Good Friday means that we can have a fresh start with God. But he also calls us to give a fresh start to other people when they ask for forgiveness. I think the advent of social media and the like means that forgiveness is sometimes in short demand. There is always the dredging up of something that was said or done in the past 
maybe that we'd forgotten all about, which comes back on our feeds, on our computers, on our laptops or whatever. Children and young people are encouraged not to post um, things that an employer might see. It's only wise, isn't it? Because in the world of social media, there's little forgiveness or restoration. Our faith has got a lot to teach here. Tom Wright, who used to be the Bishop of Durham and a really good Christian writer, speaks very eloquently about this. Many people, may, even unbelievers, have seen the value of forgiveness, of restoration through Christian input. Do accept criticism don't, and do forgive. Thirdly, do trust God to do marvellous things. As the disciple asks for more faith, Jesus goes on to say that if your faith, things happen, even as small as a mustard seed, tiny. The tree will move into the sea if you've got faith enough. And as I read the Bible, I see faith fundamentally linked with action. We do something about it. James in his letter spells it out. Faith without actions is dead. It's not faith at all. So if we trust God, we must do something about it too. We must take opportunities when they come our way. We live as God wants us to live and see what difference that makes, not just in our own life, but in those around us. We see something different going on. There are times when we might pray for something to happen and amazingly it does happen very quickly. But there are times when we pray in faith and then God gives us opportunities to respond to that prayer. For example, if in our character we feel like we don't have enough patience, we pray to God, grow patience in me, Lord God. And he answers that by putting it in a pet place where we need more patience so that it might grow. And that's what happens so often in prayer and faith. It's not just a, a simple list of things for God to do, but trusting God, even when those things don't happen like we think they should. God has a bigger purpose. Fourthly, be God's humble servant. I remember when I was in the Cubs and uh, learned the Cub promise when I uh, was brought into the 7th Cheadle Sea Scouts, despite being 54 miles away from the nearest beach. I promise that I'll do my best to do my duty to God and the Queen, to help other people, to keep the Cub, Cub Scout law. Cub Scouts always do their best, thinking of others before themselves and do a good turn every day. What a good way to live. But it was that, that idea of my duty to God and the Queen. And the word duty is a word maybe questioned today. But it just means to do what we're called to do, obliged to do, or responsible to. Jesus speaks a, a less heard parable of a servant who has the task laid out before him. Was his master going to let him off? No, his job was to be the servant, to do these things. It was his duty to the master. In fact, Jesus says at the end, the response of the servant to the master is uh, to do his task. We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. In a way, as we go about the activity of the Lord in our lives, we do it as servants of the Lord, being his people wherever we are and remembering our position. Yes, we are lifted up by God. Yes, we are children of God. We are friends of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're indwelt by God's Holy Spirit. But we'll remember that he, he is the boss. Jesus said that we should look forward to a time when the Lord says to us, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm truly hoping and resting on that day. And finally, show gratitude. You know there's blessing in it. The story of the healing of the ten lepers is at the end. Outcasts from society who see him on this, as he skirts the border of Israel. They cry out to him to show mercy on them. And he tells them to go and show themselves to the priest. He was the one who would allow the lepers back into the community with the priests. As they demonstrated faith by going, the healing came. Great was their rejoicing. But only one of them returned and he was a Samaritan. He expressed his gratitude to Jesus. And Jesus was surprised that only this foreigner would come back with thanks. Jesus gives him words of encouragement. Your faith has made you well. In a way, he was blessed as he was thankful. 
I found that gratitude does go a long way, doesn't it? Gratitude does. Not just the thanks to the waiter who served us or the checkout girl doing their best or the bus driver getting us to our destination. Gratitude to those who provide for the necessities of life, water, food and clothing. Gratitude to our forebears who gave us safe and prosperous land to live in. Gratitude to God for our lives, our families, our salvation. Thanks takes us away from the centre of the universe and puts someone else there. It's an act of humility. As we know, we can't do these things by ourselves. We give gratitude to the others who do, make these things able. And like Jesus gave the leper a blessing and encouragement, one comes to us as we're thankful as well. God lifts us up. We find the work of the Spirit at work in us. We can live knowing we have done the right thing and be encouraged. Gratitude is a, a great thing. Five things in response to the Easter message today. Don't trip others up. Accept criticism. Show forgiveness. Do trust God to do marvellous things. Be God's humble servant and show gratitude. That's a part, a little part, of living in the light. If you're living in the light of the resurrection, may God give us strength to do these things. Let me say a prayer. Lord God, we do thank you for your faithfulness and goodness to us. We are truly your unworthy servants, but we seek to do your will in so many different ways in our own life, in our character, the direction of our life, the direction of our church, the way we serve others. Lord, lead us, direct us, help us, Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to sing our next hymn. See
to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and goodness to us as a, a nation, as a world, as a community here. We pray for the work of your spirit amongst us. Direct our paths. Lead us on, we pray. Pray for those in, in need at this time. We pray especially for the people and the troubles going on in Ukraine at this moment. We pray for peace to come to that troubled country. Lord God, bless those seeking to uh, broker a peace in that place, we pray. Pray for other places where there is violence and trouble. Lord, that you would bring peace, enduring and just, showing your ways to the world. Help us, Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for our own community, remembering those recently elected to uh, office in our local councils. Gracious Father, we pray for those who have sought election and seek to serve our communities. Lord, strengthen them, we pray, in that task. Pray for all who hold office within our land, whether in houses of parliament, local councils, in the police, in the armed forces, in social services wherever it may be, Lord God. May they seek to do their duty to God and to the Queen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for those going through a time of need, of sickness or hardship. In silence, we lift to the Lord those known to ourselves who need his special touch at this time. Lord God, for those that we've named in our hearts, we pray that you draw close to them this day. Lord, bring healing and strength and perseverance to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. You should pray for our church. Pray remembering our bishops, Julian, Philip and Jill. Strengthen them in their service, we pray. Draw them close to you. Uphold them. Bless them. And Lord, we pray that you would Enable them to seek your purposes for our diocese. For all Christian leaders that would be faithful in sharing the message of the scriptures. And for all Christian people, Lord, that we would order our lives in accordance with your word and your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we pray for our schools. We give thanks for the, uh, the venture which happened a couple of weeks ago and the Christian witness which goes on locally. Heavenly Father, we pray the word, your word, would be shared with our local community, with our local schools. Lord, enable us as a, a people to be those who share what we have in your wonderful message of salvation. Bless us, we pray, in that task. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we try and join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We join together in our final hymn, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. Sparing, sent him to die 
I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my song Shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Oh